Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook with Allison Thompson with The Money Farm. And it's been kind of a mixed morning so far over in the grain trade right now. Soybeans are setting back a little bit. Corn trying to push higher while the wheat market is mixed. And Allison, we've had kind of, I guess I'll call it a relief rally, but uh, the soybean market, what are we seeing? Just a little profit taking. Is that why we're setting back here a little bit this morning or what? Yeah, I would like to say that is probably a little bit of hedge pressure, too, from a lot of yeah. uh, producers out there as well. Making some sales here, we've hit some good resistance levels. It's a good opportunity to take advantage of it. Um, so we've had a decent rally off the lows just this um, from last week. So guys need to be taking advantage of any premium we get. And right now in soybeans, a lot of the talk is weather. So if we're seeing some weather premium build, we should be taking advantage of it because we all know and the funds are well aware too that the weather forecast can change. So we could definitely see this being taken away just as fast as it's being received right now. So I think there's a good amount of farmers that are taking advantage of it. Yeah, and we had about a 40 cent rally off the lows there in the soybeans, like you said, run up into chart resistance. Corn hasn't had as big of a rally, but again, um, you know, we're kind of having a difficult time even in that market trying to get above what the 20 day moving average. Yes, yeah, so even on the front month, you know, getting around that four dollars and holding above there. Um, and for new crop, it'd be really nice to get above that four twenty-five area. It would definitely give us another boost of maybe even getting to four fifty. Uh, but we're not seeing necessarily the weather market affecting um, corn. Again, July weather has been nearly perfect for a lot of the Midwest here. So going into August, yes, it can still have an impact on yield. But what's been really helping out the corn market has been at least some short-term demand here. We've seen some good increased sales, um, which is good to see, and that's given us a little bit of a boost, but we obviously need it to continue too. Um, so to get above that, we're going to need kind of a combination of a perfect storm between weather, um, to continued demand, and obviously to see the funds exit. Um, and thankfully across the grains, we've actually seen um, some short covering. That's what a lot of people were expecting that this rally is, but we're also seeing open interest uh, start to increase as well. So it tells us that if there is something else going on besides just the funds doing a short covering rally here. Um, but again, we can't really prove that a bottom is in and that we're just going to keep continuing higher until we cross some of these key resistance levels. And for corn, that's going to be definitely important to watch going forward. Yeah. You're watching those 20 day moving averages or what in the beans too, because I know we've had a tough time getting above those levels. Yes. And I think those are going to be some key ones um, that, you know, those come into play around that 1080 area. The 30 day comes into play right around $11. And that's kind of a huge point of just a psychological level of resistance. It's a big fat round number. So getting above those, it's going to just take a, a continued weather issue or some kind of production concerns to really spark something. And again, hopefully we see China come in here too, because we definitely know it's cheap. Yeah, what is your thought about China? Because there's certainly some discussion about them maybe trying to buy before, you know, Trump perhaps gets into office because of tariffs coming, but also that they're trying to fill their reserves. So do you expect more business? I do. I do think that we'll see China eventually step in. You know, their need for soybeans and corn is year round and South America cannot provide all of those needs, especially if they're refilling reserves for quality purposes um, alone. So they're going to be forced to step in from the U.S. It's just a matter of what when at this point. And I think they're eventually getting to the point here. And I think the large purchases we've seen even to unknown destinations is likely China. So they are willing buyers and they're willing to make some big sales, in my opinion, um, is just seeing more of that taking place. Um, so right now we're just in a waiting game, but I would expect over the next few months ahead of elections, it's just going to add to the volatility of the trade when we do see some of these sales, sales start to come through. Yeah. You said weather hasn't been as big of a factor on corn because we've had good pollination weather. But, you know, is the mentality here that we're at or above trend line yields? And is that, you know, a given considering we have a lot of season left? 
Yes, we do. Um, and I think overall, the market is thinking that we're going to see some higher yields. And there's been plenty of media given to that um, aspect. I know crops do look like they're in great shape, especially on the corn side, but it's not over yet. Um, we Again, we had some issues with planting, um, especially up north here. We did have some delays with planting. And on top of that, we did have flooding issues too. Um, and how the crops actually come out of that remains to be seen. So I think, again, it's still going to come down to not only yields, but also harvested acres when it's all said and done. So we'll see if the USDA makes an adjustment here in a couple weeks on those August uh, reports. Um, but until then, it's it's still going to be a guessing game, unfortunately. And right now, everybody's kind of in that bearish camp in that respect as far as what production looks like. But if we start getting some demand in as well, it could definitely change that outlook. Yeah, and I know there's this belief that the East is going to make up for the downfalls in the West. That's yet to be seen, too. Okay, so let's talk about the wheat market. We had a nice uh, run in especially Minneapolis wheat here. Yesterday, we were down a bit. We're trying to recover today, but um, we're trying to work in some of these results of the wheat quality tour in North Dakota. Yeah, I think so. And and to be honest with you, it doesn't surprise me that they're finding some phenomenal yields. The yield, the crop here with spring wheat looks phenomenal. Um, the It's heading, it's already starting to turn color. I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing even some harvest kick up in a couple of weeks um, from now. But it's not really surprising to me or producers for that matter that they're finding some good yields out there. Um, but it has definitely seen Despite that, we've actually been holding on to gains fairly well. Um, and I think that goes back to demand. We've seen some really strong demand. I've actually been um, talking with um, some millers as well who are definitely seeking some decent quality um, spring wheat uh, from the U.S. And again, we have some global production issues that are um, still present in the northern hemisphere. Um, we're continuing to hear about downsizing crop in the EU and also Russia um, about quality concerns there as well. So if there is demand, and, and there is, I know Mexico has been a solid buyer, and we have also seen Indonesian countries, um, you know, Asian countries start to buy as well. So we could see a bit more competitiveness, especially ahead of the Southern Hemisphere entering their harvest season, and that's still going to be a couple of months away. So demand for U.S. spring wheat um, and U.S. wheat in general does remain fairly strong. Yeah, and the winter wheat, HRW, that's coming out of the field isn't as good a quality. Is that right? That's what I've been hearing. You know, usually it's kind of um, an offset. When you get yields, you don't necessarily get um, the quality or the, the necessarily the protein content. And over the last couple of years, you know, we've seen you know, winter wheat yields um, be fairly high, higher than we were expected, uh, or lower than what they expected. And that ended up being some decent quality. So they were able to use some of that better protein wheat at a discounted price um, in some of their blending. And this year we're seeing, um, again, uh, some changes there. So when you're looking at higher yield, you're looking at some lower quality wheat. And that's kind of what we're finding here affecting demand. Right. So you said off the off the top here that you thought we were seeing a little hedge pressure in the soybean market. I know you're trying to get some hedging done with this pop and these can be pretty fleeting. So how much are you suggesting producers do at this point? Honestly, we're getting, I want to get up to, uh, for old crop, I would like to get guys um, sold out of remaining old crop corn and soybeans, and then also starting to look at new crop as well. Um, I, I don't mind making sales here, but even having some working orders um, just above the market a little bit to try and catch anything close to those um, moving averages or where resistance is. And I'd, I'd feel comfortable getting up to 30% sold at this point, if not more than that. I actually prefer getting up to 30% sold and also hedging a good amount here. I'd probably go to 50% hedged, if not even more than that on both corn and soybeans and get some puts in place. Um, I've been finding some pretty cheap uh, put options for new crop at the the previous lows that we've had here just last week. So at least you're protected if 
prices do go down and make some new lows. Again, we're dealing with weather forecasts. So if this were to change over the weekend or even into the beginning of August, um, we could definitely uh, take away what we've gotten so far. So I like the idea of also having some of those um, underneath the market and working. I think insurance and overall puts have been the strategy to use this year. And we've been lucky the last couple of years, you know, prices have just continued, you know, we're moving higher and you didn't necessarily need some of these tools. But it's definitely a refresher here over the last nine months that puts have been the strategy to use and have in place. Um, and again, you have different options with them. You know, you don't have to just let them expire. They can be rolled. They can be exercised. Um, there's lots of different things that you can do with it. So I do recommend definitely having a, a hedging strategy in place and using this weather premium that we're getting or this pop in markets to get some of that done. I think guys will have a lot better or like I'll even have a little bit better sleep over the next month having some type of price protection in place. Good point. Uh, let's uh, wrap up quick with the cattle market. We're mixed this morning. Feeders lower live cattle trying to extend yesterday's gains. You know, is this all about the market sensing that cash trade is holding together pretty good with this futures discount? Is that bringing some buying in or what? what's going on, do you think? Yeah, I, I do think that's probably a good chunk of it. And also we're past the cattle on feed report too. So now it's going to go back to demand and seeing what that goes going forward. Um, we could also see some outside markets um, start to affect this thing as well. And of course, the U.S. dollar, um, that's down actually pretty decent today again. So that's also helping out our grains, but something else to keep an eye on in the livestock side as well. Very good. All right. Thanks for joining us, Allison Thompson with The Money Farm. That is Markets Now.